stars. The Kosovo Specialist Chambers is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, inside and outside the courtroom. Madam Court Officer, can you please call the case? Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is case KSC BC 2020-06, the Specialist Pro Prosecutor versus Hashim Tachi, Kadri Veseli, Recep Selimi, and Jakub Krasnici. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Now I will kindly ask the parties and participants to introduce themselves, starting with the Prosecutor's Office. Mr. Prosecutor. Thank you, Your Honor, and good afternoon to all. Alan Teeger and Ava Weiler appear on behalf of the Specialist Prosecutor's Office. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Now I turn to the defense. Ms. Alagendra, please. Your Honor, Venkateshwari Alagendra, representing Mr. Krasnici. Um, appearing together with me is Mr. Aidan Ellis, co-counsel, Victor Baisu, co-counsel, Mento Bichiri, legal associate, and Laura Abia, support team member. Thank you, Ms. Alagendra. Now I turn to the counsel for victim, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Maria Radziejowska, co-counsel representing victims in this case. Thank you very much. And now I turn to the registry, Mr. Nielsen, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, colleagues. Jonas Nielsen, Judicial Services Division, representing registry today. Thank you, Mr. Nielsen. And uh, finally, I note that Mr. Krasnici is attending the hearing in, in person. person today. Uh, on 3 September 2021, the SPO filed a request to amend the indictment pursuant to Rule 91B. The SPO presented three categories of amendments. The first category consisted of two detention sites located at Suareke Suvareka municipality, at or in connection with KLA members, committed act of persecution, imprisonment, arbitrary detention, other human, inhuman acts, cruel treatment, torture, murder, and enforced disappearance. The second category consisted of two incidents of persecution and murder committed in connection with the detention site in Gilian Gnilane municipality and the modification of the time frame for the Gilian Gnilane detention site. The third category consisted of two incidents of the accused personal participations in the crimes charged. On 23 December 2021, I issued a first decision on the SPO request in which I granted the SPO motion to amend the indictment in relation to the third category of proposed amendments, which I considered not to constitute new charges. Further, I found that the first and second categories of amendments were new charges and therefore must be assessed against the requisite evidentiary threshold of well-grounded suspicion as per Rule 86.4 of the rules, in light of the evidence submitted as per Rule 86.3 of the rules. The parties were ordered to file their responses and reply on the question of whether the supporting material to the amendments deemed to constitute new charges support a finding of well-grounded suspicion person to Rule 86.4 of the rules. On 22 April 2022, I confirmed the first and second category of amendments and the charges against the accused contained therein. I also ordered the SPO to submit by Friday 19 April 2022 an amended indictment with the first category and the second category of amendments. On 29 April 2022, the SPO filed its amended indictment, a lesser confidential redacted and public redacted versions of the first category evidentiary outline, and a confidential and a public redacted version, on, version of the amended second category of evidentiary outline. And finally, on 2nd May 2022, I scheduled this further appearance. 
Now allow me to explain the specific purpose of this further appearance for the benefit of the accused and those joining us in the public gallery and online. Today's hearing is not a trial. No evidence will be presented or debated, and the guilt or innocence of the accused will not be discussed or decided. The purpose of this further appearance is regulated by Article 39 of the law and Rules 90 and 92 of the rules. According to these provisions, I shall, as pretrial judge, have the new charges in the confirmed indictment read to the accused, confirm that the accused understands the new charges, satisfy myself that the rights of the accused, in particular his right to counsel, are respected, and inform the accused that within 30 days of today's hearing, he will be called upon to admit guilt or plead not guilty on each new charge set out in the confirmed indictment. If the accused wishes to do so, he may also immediately plead guilty or not guilty. I expect the parties to adhere to these matters, which I will address in turn. First, may I ask you, Mr. Krasnitschi, to confirm that you have received the confirmed indictment dated 29 April 2022. In the rural register. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, that represent all the different segments of the justice sector and that are called uh, to protect and to, to deliver justice. I ask for you uh, to understand me properly because during my entire life I have been a person of high integrity. And I have been a person in terms of my position with uh, uh, the, those that were the, the strongest. But when it comes to the weakest, I've never shown any signs of aggressiveness or humiliation. The only thing that I have shown is uh, a human love. Injustice, no matter how risky it was, and no matter how risky it is as we speak, because it has stemmed from the same logics that I have lived through at the time of Yugoslavia, I have never replied to the situation with silence. And therefore, I just wish to say a couple of words to you today. Probably, and probably I'm wrong, but I would have never, ever believed that if this was not the case, uh, that lawyers that are educated in liberal democracies with countries with tradition, lawyers that claim to work in a system of credible justice in order to deliver standard justice, dare to raise such an indictment that is only and solely based on the lies of Serbia and which severely and heavily infringes uh, the uh, life freedom and rights of the individual, and not only of the individual, but at the same time, it strikes very heavily in the backbone of a nation, uh, the uh, aspirations for freedom and uh, um, state formation. I feel ashamed that I am living in this time at this time of um, our people that with such an easy hand destroy the lives of the people uh, that have uh, fought for the life in freedom, for democracy and independence. Uh, so they have fought against uh, one of the regimes that was the most criminal one after the Second World War. Uh, I believe uh, that there was a second regime similar to this in the world, uh, such a criminal and genocide-based uh, uh, regime as was the case with the regime of Milosevic. And uh, nothing has happened uh, to uh, the other party. So Credit says in the fourth um, century before Christ uh, that 
no virtue derives from property, but it is above all the virtue from which every good arises from, both for the individual but for the state as well. Uh, for the times we live into, I would say, I can tell you that from what I've seen during my political life, that uh, the fact that someone can be rich or can have many powers in his hands or is well educated, in itself this does not mean uh, that uh, this by no means is accompanied by virtue. However, on the contrary, it is totally true that from the uh, people with virtue in centuries, those people that have thought of a people, of justice, of uh, well-being, of people, it's because of these people that humanism, humanity, and um, uh, the uh, uh, social development uh, have come from. Uh, the fights and injustices are not deeds of those with virtue. However, this is not true. The later one is not true for other uh, fights, uh, for um, liberation, uh, for life, and uh, for uh, of the good of people. Your Honor, I have read the indictment. I have read uh, the uh, confirmed amended indictment, and I can tell you that it is difficult for me to understand the first indictment, and it is equally difficult for me to understand the amended indictment, because I am confident that I have never, ever committed offenses of this nature. Therefore, I uh, plead uh, entirely not guilty. Of course, we want uh, for the trial uh, to be carried out expeditiously and not keep us for a longer period of time uh, at detention. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Krasnici. Uh, I wish to uh, now to uh, remind you the uh, rights that you have before this court. The law on the specialist chambers and the rules of procedure and evidence guarantee you a number of rights. First, you shall be presumed innocent until proven guilty be uh, beyond reasonable doubt. In the determination of the charges against you, you are entitled to a fair and public hearing subject to any measures ordered for the protection of victims and witnesses. You have the right to be informed promptly and in detail in a language which you understand of the nature and cause of the charges against you. You have the right to have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of your defense and to communicate with the counsel of your own choosing. You have the right to be tried within a reasonable time. You have the right to be tried in your presence and to defend yourself through your counsel. You have the right to have counsel assigned to you and without payment if you do not have sufficient means to pay for it. You have the right to examine or have examined the witnesses against you and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on your behalf. You have the right to have the free assistance of an interpreter if you cannot understand or speak the language used in the court. You have the right not to be compelled to testify against yourself or to admit guilt. You have the right to remain silent and no adverse inference shall be drawn from your silence. You also have the right to make unsworn statements relevant to the case and you may appear as a witness under oath. You have the right to lodge preliminary motions. You have the right to receive the supporting material to the amended indictment submitted for confirmation. You have the right to receive all statements of witnesses whom the specialist prosecutors intends to call to testify at trial in the language you understand and speak, namely Albanian. You have the right to receive immediately any information which may reasonably suggest your innocence or mitigate your guilt or affect the credibility or reliability of the specialist prosecutor's evidence as soon as the information in is, is, is in his custody, control, or actual knowledge. 
you have the right that all material and relevant evidence or facts in possession of the specialist prosecutor be made available to you before the beginning of and during the proceedings. This right is only subject to restrictions which are strictly necessary and when any counterbalancing protections are applied. You have the right not... Your Honor, my apologies. Mr. Krasnici doesn't have the translation, so he's not able to follow. Let us double-check. So far, whatever has been spoken, Your Honor, I am informed that he does not have a translation of that. Madam Kortefiso, can you check if there is a technical problem or if it's me speaking too fast for the interpretation. So, Mr. Krasnici, I will go back to what I was saying. Can you just confirm that now you get the Albanian translation? Perfect. Then if, if there is any other problem, please uh, let me know so that we fix the problem before I continue. I was saying that you have the right to receive all statements of witnesses whom the specialist prosecutor intends to call to testify at trial in the language you understand and speak. You have the right to receive immediately any information which may reasonably suggest your innocence or mitigate your guilt or affect the credibility or reliability of the specialist prosecutor's evidence as soon as the information is in his custody, control, or actual knowledge. You have the right that all material and relevant evidence or facts in possession of the specialist prosecutor be made available to you before the beginning of and during the proceedings. This right is only subject to restrictions which are strictly necessary and when any counterbalancing protections are applied. You have the right not to be detained for an unreasonable period prior to the opening of the case, to request review of decisions on your detention, and to appeal such decisions directly before the Court of Appeal. And finally, you have the right to appeal either directly or through certification as provided for under the rules. Mr. Krasnici, you have heard the most important rights that you enjoy in accordance with the applicable legal framework. Do you understand and have you understood these rights? And if you want me to repeat anything because there was a problem with the translation, feel free to ask me. I have nothing to add. I understood those rights, uh, and I wish for justice to triumph. Thank you, Mr. Krasnici. Uh, now I will ask the court officer to read out the new charges contained in the confirmed indictment as foreseen in Article 39 of the law and Rule 92. Madam court officer, please. Thank you, Your Honor. In the confirmed indictment, the specialist prosecutor adds the following new charges against Mr. Jakub Krasnici. A. In relation to crimes alleged to have been committed in Budakove, Budakovo, and Semetište, Semetište in Suhareke, Suvareka municipality, between about 4 July 1998 and September 1998, 
and on or around 28 or 29 April 1999, involving at least 12 persons. Count 1. The crime against humanity of persecution punishable under Article 13 1H of the law. Count 2. The crime against humanity of imprisonment punishable under Article 13 1E of the law. Count 3. The war crime of arbitrary detention punishable under Article 14 1C of the law. Count four, the crime against humanity of other inhumane acts punishable under Article 13 1J of the law. Count five, the war crime of cruel treatment punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count six, the crime against humanity of torture punishable under Article 13 1F of the law. Count seven, the war crime of torture punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 8, the crime against humanity of murder punishable under Article 13 1A of the law. Count 9, the war crime of murder punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. And count 10, the crime against humanity of enforcement, enforced disappearance of persons punishable under Article 13 1I of the law. B. In relation to crimes alleged to have been committed in Gilan Gnilane in Gilan Gnilane municipality, also in July 1999, involving at least three persons. Count 1. The crime against humanity of persecution punishable under Article 13 1H of the law. Count 2. The crime against humanity of imprisonment punishable under Article 13 1E of the law. Count 3. The war crime of arbitrary detention punishable under Article 14 1C of the law. Count 4. The crime against humanity of other inhumane acts punishable under Article 13 1J of the law. Count 5. The war crime of cruel treatment punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 6. The crime against humanity of torture punishable under Article 13 1F of the law. Count 7. The war crime of torture punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 8, the crime against humanity of murder, punishable under Article 13 1A of the law. And Count 9, the war crime of murder, punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. 2, the crimes under Counts 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 were committed as part of a widespread or systematic attack directed against the civilian population in Kosovo and Northern Albania from at least March 1998 through September 1999. In particular, these crimes targeted opponents who were perceived to have been collaborating or associating with Federal Republic of Yugoslavia FRY forces officials or state institutions, or two otherwise not supporting the aims or means of the Kosovo Liberation Army, KLA, and later the Provisional Government of Kosovo, including persons associated with the Democratic League of Kosovo and persons of, of, persons of Serb, Roma, and other ethnicities. Three, the crimes under counts three, five, seven, and nine were committed against persons not taking active part in the hostilities and in the context of and associated with a non-international armed conflict in Kosovo between the KLA and forces of the FRY and the Republic of Serbia, including units of the Yugoslav army, police, and other units of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and other groups fighting on behalf of the FRY and Serbia from at least March 1998 to approximately 16 September 1999. Four, 
In relation to these crimes, there is a well-grounded suspicion that Mr. Krasnichi is criminally responsible pursuant to Article 16.1a of the Law 4. A. Committing, as a member of a joint criminal enterprise, the crimes under Counts 1 to 10, or alternatively, committing, as a member of the aforementioned joint criminal enterprise, the crimes under count 1 to 10 by being aware that such crimes might be perpetrated in carrying out the common purpose of the joint criminal enterprise and by willingly taking that risk, and or b, aiding and abetting the crimes under counts 1 to 10. 5. In addition, and in the alternative, there is well-grounded suspicion that Mr. Krasnichi is criminally responsible pursuant to Article 16 c of the law as a superior for the crimes under counts 1 to 10. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Mr. Krasnichi, I wish to remind you that today is not the time to contest the new charges, but simply to acknowledge your understanding of the charges. You will have ample opportunity to challenge the charges with the assistance of your counsel. Mr. Krasniki, did you understand the new charges contained in the confirmed amended indictment as read out to you by Madam Court Officer? I understood the charges because I understand Albanian very well. But I'm positive that I hold no kind of responsibility about the charges that were raised against me. Thank you, Mr. Krasnici. I wish to inform you that according to Article 21.5 of the law, you may not represent yourself because you are currently in detention. Representation by specialist counsel is therefore mandatory. I note that you are and you have been represented by counsel since the beginning of the proceeding, so I'm therefore satisfied that the accused is presently represented by counsel. I will now turn, even if you mentioned this before, but I will formally turn to the possibility uh, for the accused to enter a plea today. Mr. Krasniki, within 30 days, you will be called to admit guilt or plead non guilty on each new charge in the amended confirmed indictment. However, if you wish to do so, you can choose to immediately plead guilty or not guilty. I would therefore like to ask you if you had had the opportunity to discuss the charges in the confirmed indictment with your counsel, and if you are prepared to enter a plea at this time today. I have, of course, uh, talked with my counsel and uh, my defense team. I plead not guilty. Thank you, Mr. Krasnici. This is noted. At this point, I would like to ask the parties and participants if they have any other issues they would like to raise. Mr. Prosecutor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, counsel for victim, please. Same here. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And no issues, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Then this concludes today's uh, hearing. I thank the parties and participants for their presence. And the hearing is adjourned. All rise.